the rebellious public schoolgirl who became Britain's most wanted woman. What was it like being a fugitive? It was the middle classes spend a fortune educating their children privately. They hope they'll emerge well-mannered, well-spoken, and well on their way to a career in the respectable professions. But when it comes to falling on the wrong side of the law, even the most privileged upbringing is no barrier. Now, she was the young woman with everything. Money, brains, good looks, and a first-class education. But today, a dramatic fall from grace. She's gone on the run with a pilot known as the Baron after trying to fake her own death. Can you help track her down? The woman police were hunting was ex-public schoolgirl Fiona Mont. Fiona was born into an upper middle class family, listed in posh people's Bible, the Bretts. Her mother was a senior figure in the local Conservative Party. She was accused of being part of a huge fraud involving stolen computer equipment, where suppliers and customers had been ripped off to the tune of hundreds of thousands of pounds. Fiona was interviewed by police and released on bail pending formal charges. But then her story took a dramatic turn. Rather than face being charged, she went on the run. With her pilot friend, Graham the Baron Hesketh, she escaped to the continent. The police launched a massive appeal for information in the media. During the search of the flat, we in fact found these two wigs, as you can see is a blonde one and a redhead. Um, and as we do not believe these were for her boyfriend's use, we believe they're for her use. It obviously shows that she can change her appearance. Why can't I see anything through the lens? So look through here. Fiona may have been from a well-heeled family, but she had a taste for bad boys. Graham, the Baron Hesketh, was a convicted drug smuggler. Together, they would find love on the run. This footage is the personal record of their escapades. Where do you reckon we are now? Antwerp. Antwerp. Much of their time in Europe was spent worrying about being spotted and recognised. If there was somebody that you didn't like who was after you, would you feel safe in this house? With all those big windows and, oh, hello, I can see you, you live in a goldfish bowl. All I have to do is smash the side to get to you. If they lock the door at the front, you can get out the back, but they'd see you go out the back, couldn't they? Through the fingers. Back in Britain, the police were making little progress with their search. Their two fugitives always seemed to be one step ahead. We went to search two commercial containers. We expected them to be full of property, computers, uh, laptops, and furniture. When we got there, they were in fact empty. Uh, and these two items were the only thing that we could uh, find in there, which was two smiley faces. Obviously, somebody's got a sense of humor. But life on the run could only last for so long. Speaking for the first time since her arrest, Fiona tells us about life inside a Spanish jail. The blankets were alive with lice. I could feel them crawling all over my face. And the place was just like a lunatic asylum. It was an alleged fraud involving stolen computers that brought ex-private schoolgirl Fiona Mont to the attention of police. After detectives pulled her in for questioning, she went on the run and fled abroad. Fiona has never told her story before, but we tracked her down and tonight she breaks her silence for the first time. Lots of people along the way have said, what was it like being a fugitive? It was fantastic. It was, it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant to, to be free of them. And um, I thought that's an end to it. <laughs> Fiona had attended a £7,000 a year private school. But that's where her troubles started. Private school was horrible. They were definitely, definitely trying to mould us into a particular image, the same image. I was also very shy and very quiet and it built and built and built and built and it exploded when I was 14. Fiona's rebellion against her privileged upbringing eventually led her into the arms of convicted drug smuggler Graham the Baron Hesketh. On the run, she kept ahead of the police by staying on the move and sleeping in a caravan. 
With Hesketh, she traveled through Holland, France, and then Spain. When I asked him if he would come with me, he said yes, straight away, without hesitation. From our point of view, it's a love story. Back in the UK, police accused the couple of taunting them, sending letters poking fun at detectives working on the case, along with a fake check for one million pounds. The latest back in England is that uh, apparently we've been sending taunting emails to the police. The fact they were saying I was taunting them, it was quite the reverse, I wasn't. Police were trying to use the press to get a reaction because they might get a trace or a track on where we were. And I was adamant that I wasn't going to give them that, I wasn't going to give anything away. Fiona was so elusive, the media nicknamed her the cat. But after three years on the run, she finally ran out of lives when Detective Constable Steve Skerritt caught up with her. Steve Skerritt came into Spain and had me arrested in Spain. Fiona was thrown into a Spanish jail to await extradition. The blankets were alive with lice. I could feel them crawling all over my face. And the place was just like a lunatic asylum. Just exactly what was it that I did that has justified or in any way excused this? I mean, are there, are there crowds of people back in England cheering that I'm being arrested? After 40 days in jail, Fiona had a surprise visitor. And my name was called out on the tannoy. And this boy in jeans and a t-shirt said, um, uh, who was there with court's papers, he said, um, you're free to go. And I, you know, I had to make him repeat it several times. I couldn't believe it. And he said, you're free to go. You can go home. It's still unclear why Fiona was released by the Spanish authorities. But British police say that somewhere along the line there was an administrative mix-up. Fiona has always denied her guilt, and to this day she's never been charged. Since being on the run, she and Hesketh have married and had two children. But memories of being a fugitive are still vivid. After a few uh, weeks back, I thought, I'm a bit worried maybe they'll still come, so I'll ring them. So I rang the chief constable's office. And I spoke to a lady there, and she said, Fiona who? <sighs> After all that. Obviously somebody's got a sense of humour. My family weren't rich, though, wasn't they? Well, I'm not saying they were. But they were known, well known. So where did he come from? And then, can we put a start on this? Actually, nice family, well brought up, lots of money on the criminal investigation. By the way, she's obviously a bad girl. She's obviously the black sheep of the family. What a story. Right. Detective Steve Skerritt went looking for a family computer. I saw what looked like an outstanding offer and went round to an address in Hove where I met Fiona for the first time. My computer. And it was cheap. We got a search warrant and on the Monday, rather than go back down there and buy the computer system, we actually went down there and raided her flat. This is the face of Fiona Mont, the woman dubbed Britain's Most Wanted. Uh, and these two items were the only thing that we could uh, find in there, which was two smiley faces. She later skipped bail, faked her own death at Beachy Head and fled the country, flying from Shoreham Airport with her boyfriend Graham Hesketh, himself a convicted drug trafficker. <laughs> The Daily Mail was after the glamour story, and they wanted your arrest. I can't say any journalist, I, I, I say that there's not many journalists at principal because they're after the story. Yeah. As well, and maybe quite rightly, police get blamed for everything, which is uh, normal and sometimes very justified. And actually, we were to blame because I took it to the media in order to try and find you. And uh, once you do that, you open up a bloody can of worms. You open up a gate that can't be closed. Mm. Really? Mm. Because it's now taken out of your control. Mm. 